friends, it's me, Jonah, and today I have the perfect beginner crochet tutorial for those of you who are beginners and the perfect tutorial for those of you who are more advanced and would like a simple, fast, but very color coordinated with your kitchen decor dishcloth. So this is a Lily Sugar Cream Vertical Stripe Crochet Dishcloth and it's pretty simple to see why that is the title of this pattern. It is just a classic single crochet with chain background and you work slip stitch over lay over it to give those five beautiful columns for a color of pop on just a solid neutral or really whatever you'd like base. And I made a set in three coordinating colors that I think are perfect for spring. A light pink, a light blue, and a soft yellow. And for this pattern, you can use any yarn you'd like, even though I do recommend you use cotton. For example, Lily Sugar and Cream works great. It comes in so many colors, including regulars, ombre, striped, holiday colors, um, all these different ball, big ball, small balls. They have like scrub balls, there's like scrubby yarn in it. They have cones, they have cones just like right here. So that way you can make a lot of the solid bases, like you can make a ton of them in let's say white and then just get smaller balls to add pops of color. And then another thing you can do is use these smaller balls to make the actual dishcloth the white part and then use these tiny little balls to make the color overlay because these are small, they're meant for amigurumi, but they come in mercerized cotton so they're really strong and have a lot of luster to them. So I think these are perfect for adding my own slip stitching, but you can choose whatever you'd like. And you'll also need a crochet hook. Since you're a beginner, you don't have to be exact right now. Just go for anything from a five to a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey. For those of you who are more advanced crocheters, you will love these. Not the best to start off with a beginner though. And then of course, you'll need a pair of scissors, which is a given when you're crocheting. And the free written pattern, which is from yarnspirations.com. And now make sure you put a link below to the free written pattern and Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. And today I'm gonna to take you through step-by-step step how to make this dishcloth very slowly for those of you who are beginners. And then I'll speed up for those of you who are more advanced crocheters. But one more tip before we hop in is that if you're a beginner crocheter and I'm still going too fast for you, because I love to crochet fast, it's hard for me to go slow. That if I'm going too fast, there's a gear icon or depending on if you're on a mobile device or a laptop or computer or whatever you're on, there's either a gear, so you can click on that and then change the playback speed to slower or faster. Or if you're on a different device, you can go up to the three dots and then click the playback speed and then change it to 1.25 times as fast or whatever you'd like. So you can slow it down or speed it up no matter what device you're doing. And that'll be in the top right corner. So let's get started making our vertical stripe crochet dishcloths with lily sugar and cream yarn or whatever yarn you'd like. So here's the pattern that I printed off. It's the lily sugar and cream vertical striped dishcloth. And it is a super simple pattern. As you say, see right here, it's easy level, but I think of it even more towards the beginner level, the beginner side of easy. So super, super easy. Um, and you'll see all the materials are listed over here with the yarn, the amounts you'll need, the gauge, which is not important for a dishcloth in this case. Just use a five millimeter hook or a five and a half, does not matter. So now we're gonna start. And we start reading the pattern from right here with our chain 28 with our main color, which in this case is white or crew or cream or whatever you'd like. It could be anything, but in this case, it's cream, crew, white, or a solid neutral color. And then you start to follow the pattern for round one, two, and then two repeats until you've worked eight and, a, eight and a quarter inches. And then you start to work these overlapping lines, which are very simple. It's even easier than the single crochet. So let, let's get started. I'm gonna take my yarn out here. And pull off a good amount. Then take out my hook. And I'm now going to chain 28. And I sew my pattern here at all times so that I can reference it. So for a chain, you yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through. Two. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, and now you have twenty-eight chains. You can see how it's just this long thing of interlocking V's. Then you're going to go and count back one V to the second one. Insert your hook in that V. Pull up a loop. Yarn over. Pull through two. That's a single crochet. You're going to work two more. Insert into the next top of the V. Pull up a loop. Yarn over. And pull through two. Insert into the next stitch. Pull up a loop. Yarn over. Pull through two, and you work three single crochets. You can kind of see these little stitches here. You can count the tops, these arrows on top, like you had for the bottom, or you can count the posts. One, two, three, one, two, three, whatever you'd like. Next, you're going to chain one, and then you're going to skip one of these V's or chains here at the bottom, and make four single crochets into the next one. One, two, three, four. You're going to chain one, skip a chain, and work four more single crochets over the next four stitches. One, two, three. Four, chain one, work a single crochet over the next four stitches. And then next, you're going to chain one again, work a single crochet over the next four stitches. And then once you're done with that, we're going to end the round in a different way. Like basically how we started so symmetrically which is very common when you're crocheting three and four so here's what you've established so far then you're going to chain one skip a chain and work three single crochet across the last three chains so this is what i have you have three chains, three, I mean, three single crochet as a chain, and then groups of four single crochet separated by chains, and you finish it with three on this side. So now it is time to move on to row two. So you're just going to turn your work like a page in a book. And then you're next going to chain one. And then you're going to insert under the top V of this single crochet right here. You kind of turn it down to the V so you can see one post, two post. Go underneath both of them. Pull up a loop. In over. Pull through two. Go to the next V. You can turn it. Go underneath it. Pull up a loop. In over. Pull through two. Go into your next single crochet, work a single crochet, and you're going to chain one and work four single crochets across the next four single crochets, skipping this chain one right here.
and in my fourth single crochet right here. And then next I'm going to chain one. And work four single crochets across the next four stitches after skipping that chain one. Chain one. Skip a chain. And work four single crochets across the next four stitches, just like we have been doing the whole time for the main body portion. And then work your last single crochet of this group. Chain one. And then work four more single crochets. Four, chain one, and work three single crochets in the last three stitches. And now you've established row two. Now row two is a repeat row. So now you're gonna turn your work like a page in a book and chain up one. And then work three single crochets across the first three stitches. One, two, three. Then you're gonna chain one, skip a stitch and work four single crochets over the next four single crochets. Chain one, skip and work four single crochets, two, three, four, chain one. Skip a single crochet, a chain, and then continue repeating this pattern across to the end of your row. And then as for row two and for row one, of course, you chain one. And then you just work until your last three stitches. One, two, three, four. Then you chain one and just work over three stitches. One, two, three. And now for lay it down, there you have your row established. I'm gonna pull off some more lead yarn, which you should do. Just take your ball and pull off some more yarn. And now you have the starter rows established. One, just for the setup row, and two, just to really get in that pattern. And you can see it doesn't have much stretch to it because cotton is naturally an inelastic fiber. That's one of the benefits of cotton, depending on the project you're making. And I'm going to do this row with you one more time, and then I'm going to set you off on your own to continue it to the height of your dishcloth because it just repeats the same what we're doing. So you're going to turn your work like a page in a book. And you're going to chain up one. And then work a single crochet into the next three stitches. You're going to chain one. Work a single crochet over the next four stitches after skipping that chain one space. So right now I'm going to reiterate something I've said several times previously in this tutorial. Is that you want to always skip that chain space. Chain one and then always skip it. So you should always have columns of four going up and then three on the sides. 
And now that you've, you've already established the width of your work, so your work won't get any wider, it'll just get longer now. Because you're just adding onto it and building onto it in a way. By building the yarn up, we're using your crochet hook and a series of loops and stitches. Which, as you go, your project will be getting bigger and bigger and you'll have to hold it in your hands different ways and hold the yarn different. But as you keep crocheting, you'll start to get used to that. But this is just a dishcloth, so it's not like having a whole afghan on your lap or anything, so it should be manageable as long as you just position the way you hold it differently. Because it's, it's less than 9 by 9 inches square. So just give it a little practice, try changing the way you hold your hook, try changing the way you hold your yarn, if it's uncomfortable for you, because everybody does it a little differently. One, two, three. Okay. So here is your row. Row four, and you've done one, two three four rows and now you could either work until you have eight and a quarter inches in length just measure it from here to the top or you could work about 28 to 30 rows that'll be very close enough to square it depends on whether or not you want to use the measuring tape or practice counting your rows it's whatever you choose to do they're both identical so I'm going to work up my eight and a quarter inches or 28 to 30 rows and then meet you back here and we can do the slip stitch lines and then you'll see why these chain spaces are coming in very handy. Okay, so now I have my pattern back out and you can see that they have a picture of how to do the slip stitch in here if you like that, but I'm gonna take you through it step by step. So I'm gonna pull out my body of my dishcloth. Here it is all worked up. And then take out my crochet hook and now I've switched to a different crochet hook just because I like to use a slightly smaller one for my slip stitching, but most people don't do that, so I recommend you just stick with the five and a half or five, whatever you manage to achieve your gauge with. And what you're gonna do is take your dishcloth and insert in these bottom holes right here, not this one right here. These, there's one, two, three, four, five, and it's a hole where you change one, put your hook in there, Gun flip the work. And then hook it around and pull this yarn up through. And then insta your hook right into this stitch. And pull the yarn back through. And then go through that stitch. Let me zoom in a little bit and show you that again. So you're going to go over into your next chain one space. Pull the yarn back through on this side. To create a chain. Join back in to create a chain. Chain. And I'm going to work eight more. One, two, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like so I can lay it down for you flat. Three, and eventually you'll be able to turn it and don't, you don't want to look at the back. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and if I lay it flat and zoom back out, you can see what it looks like. How this arrow forms, and then a really nice contrast with the background fabric. Then you can just insert your hook and keep kind of chaining up as you go. You want to be loose, but not too loose, or else it looks sloppy. And you want to be tight, but not too tight, or else it buckles your work down. And it'll like pull it down at the seam, so it'll look all lumpy, and that would just waste all this time you made with the perfectly square, even flat dishcloth. And this is one of the best tips for a beginner, is just doing a bit basic dishcloth like this. But if you want it to be a little nicer than just a plain, boring white dishcloth, you can do this style where you just use the basic stitch, and the first thing you learn how to do, which is chain after you learn the slip knot. 
And then you can just chain or vertical slip stitch as it's called when it's worked on work to add it on to your fabrics. And I'm gonna pull these loops up, come back through and pull it through. And then I'm gonna come to my next spot, which in my case is right here. Pull my yarn out, grab it from the back, come around, insert under the next chain, and using my strand, making sure you grab the right strand, the working strand, pull them back through. See, sometimes your other strands can get tangled in there, so set them aside, move them around. And this one they both hooked on, but you want to get both of them if you're using a thin yarn. If you're just using the same yarn, no need. You're just going to keep repeating this, chaining up your work. It's so repetitive. This is one of those many benefits you will discover as you go through your journey of crocheting since this is the perfect project for a beginner or a very relaxing and very repetitive project for a more advanced crocheter. You can see how it's already separating a column between these two. Notably with this style and the color change and all the different aspects of it being different from each other and they make the prettiest sets because you can do it all one base like I made all mine in white and then you can do all of them in cream and then change different colors you could do it in rainbow sets you can really do whatever you'd like with this kind of project and there you go you just have to keep doing this five more times And then just do it again here, here, and here. And you're finished with your dishcloth. That is it. That is how simple it is. There may be some mistakes for you as you go along, but I know you'll get the hang of it. I hope you really enjoyed making your very own Lily Sugar and Cream vertical stripe dishcloth. And after you give it a try and get to about here on the first two rows, if you're a beginner, you'll get the hang of it. It's very simple and just keep persisting, just keep trying, and you'll get it eventually. And I would love to know what colors you're doing for your background, which mine is white, and all the different fun colors you're putting in for the overlay, like all these different vibrant colors or more of a toned down neutral palette. Just let me know in the comments below so that I can have some inspiration from you, my crochet friends, for future dishcloths I plan to make. And I'll also make sure that I put a link below to my website where you can find my crochet shirts. Like this one, for example, it says Crochet Away with a Ball of Yarn. My two books, one autobiography and one pattern book. A set of kits, that's another great way to have kids learning how to crochet because that's everything they need to make a hat or a cute little stuffed cat. So they're perfect for kids to start crocheting. And I also have a set of DVDs, t-shirts, baskets that are handmade, all sorts of handmade items if you're lucky to get there fast enough. But You'll have to check it out to see everything on my website, jennyhands.com. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, Jenna's Hands, for more crochet tutorials, show and tells of projects I've made, updates, and showing you my afghans that I made, all different things encompassing yarn and crocheting. Crochet away, friends.